So I finally sat down and I watched She-Hulk after a couple of weeks of it being out, all three episodes in one sitting. And I got to say, I actually quite liked it. I thought it was a pretty good show. And I don't understand a lot of the criticism and a lot of the hate that it's been getting online. And actually, after watching the show, I went online on Twitter. My bad. And uh, I searched She-Hulk and the content that I found and the tweets that I found uh, were so ridiculous that it led me to believe that we need to be teaching media literacy in school at a much younger age. Being a superhero is a trial by fire. Who's going to protect the world if not people like you? You could be an Avenger. Oh, I'm not a superhero. That is for billionaires and narcissists and adult orphans for some reason. Before we talk about any of the identity politics about She-Hulk, let's talk about why the show is good. Um, I feel like She-Hulk is one of the most refreshing takes of uh, in the MCU uh, recently. I think the, all of their shows have been relatively the same formula, the same action-driven formula with the same quippy characters and the same general premise all over the place. But She-Hulk m- feels more like a lawyer drama or like a character drama with the addition to the fact that these people are... Um, superheroes and that she is a superhero so instead of it feeling like a superhero show that tries to involve uh drama or lawyer elements like daredevil their daredevil is a superhero show that incorporates lawyer drama elements to it this feels like it's a character driven show of a woman who happens to be a lawyer who also includes superhero elements attached to the show and i think that that's very uh unique and not unique but i think that that's very that works in favor of the show itself, because instead of trying to attach the subgenre of lawyer drama to the superhero drama, you're doing the opposite. And the lawyer drama has a lot more character intrigue, a lot more character moments, a lot more opportunity for legitimate character development than the superhero genre has by itself. So when you attach the superhero genre to the lawyer drama, genre you get something that is uh, pretty fun and refreshing and especially when the premise of the show is not only that she's a normal lawyer but that she's a lawyer attached to a superhuman law uh, program created by this other super massive law firm so there's already some really fun explorations of the world post everything that happened in the mcu now that superheroes are a lot more public and now that they're a lot more common in society and new asgard is in earth and there's a lot more people with powers roaming around earth it's really fun to see how that affects the culture of earth at that point and i think that she hulk is probably the closest thing we've gotten to see how that change affects uh, just culture in general on Earth, which I think is a really fun thing to see and part of why I like it a lot. So in the context of this show, Jennifer Walters, who is Bruce Banner's cousin, was going out on a road trip with him. They get into a car accident. Uh, Bruce is wearing an inhibitor, which prevents him from turning into the Hulk. Uh, he starts bleeding during the car accident. Uh, Jennifer Walters helps him out of the car, which he's stuck in, and a little bit of blood gets into her bloodstream, and she receives a lethal dose of gamma radiation. Now, due to her close resemblance of Bruce's genetic profile, she can metabolize that gamma radiation and transform into a Hulk as well. Then Bruce takes her into his private island and then teaches her or tries to teach her how to control the powers of the Hulk, uh, but turns out that she is already pretty good at controlling them. She can transform at will pretty easily. She retains her mental sanity and her mental composure as uh, She-Hulk, and so she lives pretty quickly after that to return to her life as a lawyer until her powers are revealed publicly because she saved the life of the jury in a case that she was in causing the jury to be a mistrial. She gets fired from that job and then gets hired on by another law agency to run the superhuman law department as She-Hulk. Now, Jennifer Walters as She-Hulk. 
And I think that the logic of that show is extremely well done. I think everything makes sense. Everything that happened in the first episode for me totally tracks as to why she's where she's at at the end of the third episode. And I think that it sets up the character of Jennifer Walters very well. We know that she's a strong lady that doesn't, didn't want to be the Hulk and tries her best to not let that define her. And when it ultimately does, she is trying to keep it in control and sort of use it to her adventure rather than letting it be used against her. And that's kind of the operating thesis of the show is use what you have to your advantage and don't let other people use it against you. And it's a great metaphor in the workplace for kind of being a woman. People think that she got hired exclusively because she's a superhuman that has a law degree. People are going to start using that against her. And she expresses some of those feelings in the third episode or in the second episode, sorry. And uh, it's just a really interesting metaphor for being a woman and being a diversity hire in a workspace or being called a diversity hire in a workspace when you actually know your field and you are actually really good for the job. Um, but people's preconception of you will not let that shine through. And what you have to do to sort of emotionally process all of that and become a successful worker despite all of those facts. You guys absolutely just heard that. And so while the show's logic and the show's plot makes a lot of sense and it's very logic and I like it a lot, the show does suffer from the traditional Marvel quippiness and that is always there. Every character is kind of a jokester. They all have this very dumb comedic humor. They talk to each other in a way that like no human being ever talks to another human being. All of the great stuff that we've seen from Marvel over the last couple of years is still kind of present when it comes to the writing in this show. However, it's not as awful or as egregious as we've seen it in movies like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 or in any of the other Marvel movies that have come out uh, after Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Even though the comedy is still there and even though the comedy is something that could be described as like cringy or this quippy sense of just weedonization type comedy, it's not nearly as bad and offensive as a lot of the other shows and a lot of the other uh, character interactions like we've seen. Like even in Captain America and the, not Captain America, uh, Winter Soldier and Falcon, Falcon and Winter Soldier show. There's a lot of moments where they interact and they're being quippy to each other and kind of banterous. Uh, without no legitimate reason of them being banterous, uh, stuff like that. It even happened in Loki, uh, which is like my favorite MCU show. A lot of the characters were just constantly bantering and being jokes and using jokes at the expense of each other, and that gets really exhausting. And while She-Hulk has some of that, it's not to the extent that we've seen it in the MCU in the past, which I deeply appreciate. The show also takes a lot of inspiration from shows like Fleabag. There's a fourth wall breaking element here where Jennifer Walter is directly addressing the audience and it doesn't happen very often. It's mostly prevalent in the first episode because they use it as a vehicle for you to catch up on the backstory without wasting a lot of valuable time into the present story. And then a lot of the times it's used for a comedic effect and She-Hulk, make no mistake, is a comedy. It's a lawyer drama comedy superhero show and the comedic elements definitely do shine through again they do suffer from that little bit of like marvel cringe uh, but it's not as egregious as a lot of the other films that a lot of the other tv shows that happened and the jokes actually do land it's pretty funny it's a good show <clears throat> there's this one particular joke that really killed me uh when there's an there's an a story and a b story happening in the same episode with emil Blonsky's law case and uh th i forget his name uh, but there's another dude that used to work with Jennifer Walters who's getting sued or who's suing an Asgardian shapeshifter for scamming him. And there's an a, B, it's an a story and a B story in that episode. And at the end, they're at a bar and or at the third act, they're at a bar and Jennifer Walters is complaining about her case. And then this guy comes in and is complaining about his case and they're having a conversation and they're figuring out how to solve it. And then Jennifer Walters just goes, oh, merging off the A and B story. Nice. And then she just goes away. <laughs> and I think that that's kind of like the ideal uh, wall breaks that should be happening. They work for the comedy. They don't take you out of the story. And uh, they they just work for the, for the content. And also Jennifer Walters is a genuinely likable character in the show. 
She is a very strong person. She's not weak-minded. She's not a passive character. She does kind of take control of her situation and acts accordingly. Her relationship with Bruce, I feel like, is really well-drawn. We've never seen Bruce in any of the other official content sort of talk about his cousin or have any meaningful conversation with her cousin. But they do a good job at setting that relationship up in the show where you can kind of just let that slide and it's not a big deal. They're cousins. We didn't have to know about it before. We know about it now. It's fine. So granted, there's only been three episodes of the show, so I can't necessarily sit here and talk about everything that I think is going to make the show good or why I think the show is extremely well done, uh, because I haven't seen the entirety of the, of the show. I've only seen three episodes. Part of the reason why I wanted to make this video is because after jumping into Twitter and seeing what the reception of the show was, I've been seeing a lot of bad takes, a lot of bad faith takes about the show, sort of engaging in identity politics and engaging in, in wokeism and sort of how feminism is, is hurting uh, the MCU. And I think it's been really interesting because the show actively makes fun of people like that. The show is making a point to tell you that people who hate female superheroes, oh, sorry, people who hate uh, female super. Uh, but the quotes make sense. People who hate female superheroes, the show is actively targeting and calling them dumb um, because these characters are doing the exact same things that other characters have done in the past, other male characters. And it's never been an issue before. But as soon as a woman does it, as soon as a woman is present uh, in the video as a forefront of the character, then suddenly it's a big issue. And I think episode three uh, really solidifies that because they have a montage about like everyone commenting on She-Hulk's public appearances and they're saying like oh no more female superheroes no more x and that uh she's only doing it for the publicity she's not a real superhero like that kind of thing so the show is targeting you if you feel that way and the show is calling you stupid <laughs> and you should take that to heart uh because it, just in the in the next day like in the last couple of hours i've looked at youtube content for she-hulk and all i've seen is this people complaining about how she-hulk is not good and that it's not good because it's propagating the wokeism agenda the show is not doing that the show is not injecting identity politics or wokeism or feminism in any real significant way does the show sometimes have mentions of men being shitty to women and women getting cackled and women uh, getting assaulted by men and being treated poorly by men in the workforce. Absolutely. But that kind of context uh, is in the show because the main character is a female and those are her experiences. And whether you like it or not, that is generally the female experience in America and a lot of other places too, but I'm speaking from like the show's context. In America, a woman will have to deal with all of the things that Jennifer Walters' character is dealing with. So of course that they show up in the show. Of course they're going to talk about it. It's not this weird, deeply rooted agenda of men being bad and men being toxic and them shoving that down, pe down people's throats. They're just writing a female experience. The creator, writer, and showrunner, Jessica Gao, I think that's how you pronounce it. I hope. Let me look it up again. Meow. The creator is a woman named Jessica Go, uh, which leads me to believe that as an Asian woman, she has a lot of experience in being treated as an outcast and then being treated uh, poorly in a workspace that is typically male dominated. It's awesome that we are finally getting to the point where mainstream content is addressing those issues and providing some solidarity to the audience that is constantly going through those issues. That being said, the show is not ham-fisting those down your throat. It's not presenting them in a way that could be considered offensive to anybody. It's just simply talking about them as they happen. And one of the scenes that people quote uh, as being like toxic in this aspect is like soon after she gets her powers, uh, Jennifer Walters' character is with Bruce meditating and he tries to teach her and he says, you need to be able to control your anger so that you end up hurting and you know, destroying a whole city, essentially. And Jennifer Walter responds with, Well, here's the thing, Bruce. I'm great at controlling my anger. Mm. I do it all the time. When I'm catcalled in the street, when incompetent men explain my own area of expertise to me, I do it 
pretty much every day because if I don't, I will get called emotional or difficult or might just literally get murdered. So I'm an expert at controlling my anger because I do it infinitely more than you. So all of this just feels like projecting a lot of shit onto me. See? No, I'm doing this. Okay, this is completely new territory. <laughs> You guys have outgrown your binder, cuz. Love you, Bruce, but I'm going home. And people are catching that scene and saying that she's saying that she's better at Bruce or that she has, she has it harder than Bruce, uh, which is not the case in the slightest. She is not saying that. She is just saying that as a woman, she has had to maintain a level of emotional composure that any man will never have to maintain or has not been forced to maintain until they went through something as brutal as becoming the fucking Hulk. Like it's, it, it, this is the part where I get really confused and I start thinking that we need media literacy classes because <laughs> people are pointing this out as like bad writing or like ham fisted wokeism agenda or toxic feminism. And it is neither of those things. It is simply a woman talking through her experiences and her filter, and now people are calling it as toxic because it's calling out a lot of generally bad behavior. So this notion that the show is engaging in some sort of awful, like, feminism, wokeism rhetoric is bullshit and is used by men that want to gatekeep women from enjoying the species of content or to have representation in the species of content just to really ostracize them. This kind of gatekeeping is used by men who don't want women to become part of the space uh, in an attempt to ostracize them so that they're not welcome. And this kind of like wokeism, toxic feminism agenda that a lot of people are claiming that the show is propagating uh, doesn't exist. Let's just be honest. It does not exist. There is no toxic wokeism. There is no toxic feminism. The creator being an Asian woman uh, probably has a lot of experience feeling like an outcast and feeling like she's being treated poorly because she's in a male-centric field. It, it happens. And those are the experiences that are being talked upon. And the fact that She-Hulk was hired uh, to run the superhuman law division creates a nice metaphor where she's comparing being hired just for being a Hulk as to being hired just for being a woman and a diversity hire, and all of the damaged preconceptions that come with that. The show is making fun of people that believe that. The show is actively targeting those uh, toxic wokeism, toxic feminism people, and treated them for the laughing stock that they are. At the end of the third episode, when she goes public, uh, there's a montage of conversations on Twitter, like fake Twitter, where it's essentially just them making fun of men that comment stuff on Twitter like, oh, I'm tired of female superheroes. Like, oh, I'm all for female superheroes, but they shouldn't be doing this, X and that. The show has always a couple of angles where uh, every woman is accused of sleeping with every other male person that she works for, and that us often gets propagated in the media to discredit them. It is a very true-to-life show with how men are reacting regarding female superheroes in real life. At the end of the day, She-Hulk is a pretty good show whose only downfall is the universe in which it exists and surrounded by fans boys who claim to want more female superheroes but at the end of the day always reject them ostracize them make fun of them don't engage with the material and uh, claim it as a delivery of a weird toxic political agenda that feminism has which is insane the only thing that's happening here is that women are being wildly accepted into the space and some of you hate it some of you hate the fact that women are getting more accepted, becoming more normalized, and taken away from your silly little identity of loving superhero content. So relax. The show is already making fun of you. The show doesn't care what you think. People are starting to care less and less about what you think. You're speaking into an echo chamber of people that share your weirdly sexist, sort of racist, um, sort of beliefs about the comic book industry and the movie industry that exists here. There is no agenda against you. We're just moving on with the times. And while Marvel can sometimes feel somewhat patronizing when they're talking about social issues, so relax. 
the show is already making fun of you because it knows that you're wrong. We know that you're wrong. If you look at any one of these communities, you're going to find the same type of people talking into their own echo chambers about why feminism and wokeism is poisoning TV shows and movies. It's not. You're living in an antiquated era where you are gatekeeping content and stories to engorge your silly little identity as the authority in comic books and comic book movies. Just shut up. We're already laughing at you, and we're going to keep laughing at you. I think that's a good way to end this video. She-Hulk is good, and you should watch it. It's not for everybody. It's At the end of the day, it is a courtroom drama with superhero elements, and you might not be into that. But give it a chance. Don't listen to these people that are talking about it's bad, it's toxic, it's like too feminist, all of that stuff. Give it a watch. Form your own opinion. I think the show is good, and I commend uh, Jessica Go for making it. And it's actually a very refreshing uh, take on the superhero genre. That being said, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.